So assignment one, we got a, a quick introduction to it last class, and I just showed you some of my inspirations for the demo I'm going to do. You can do any fantasy landscape you want. And I didn't even do a sketch for you guys. All I did was flip the sketch horizontally that I did for the morning class. This is like a creative challenge for me. So in the morning class, I'm doing this high desert kind of surreal thing. For you, I'm doing surreal too, but I wanted to do this kind of cave grotto. And I wanted to show you how flexible these sketches can be because they're compositions. So this is my sketch for the cave grotto. And all you need in your sketch, even before you find lots of references, is a distinguishable foreground, middle ground, and background. So we're going to do a quick little exercise. It helps if you stand up because you need to have some, some length of vision. And you're going to hold up a hand in front of your face. Everyone do this with me. Stand up. Hold up your hand in front of your face. Now focus on your hand. Right? Open your fingers and you'll see, as long as your eyes are focused on your hand, everything behind it is blurry. So that's foreground and background. Two layers of depth. Now, focus on the background. And your hand is blurry, right? Now we have two layers of depth, foreground and background, and still only two layers of depth. Now we're going to add a third hand. A third layer of depth with a second <laughs> hand, yes. So you're going to take your, your other hand and you're going to put it between the hand that's up and your eyes. And now you're going to focus on the hand that's closest to you. It might cross eye a little bit, but now you still only have two layers of depth, right? So the only way to get three layers of depth is to focus on the middle ground hand. Focus on that hand and you'll see the hand in front is blurry, the hand in the middle is sharp, and everything behind the hand in the middle is blurry. Three distinct layers. That's what we're trying to get with how we set up our landscape composition. And that's going to give us the most depth, the most um, most opportunity and in interaction. So, the next step after you do kind of a rough sketch is to collect reference to support your idea. So, if I'm going to do kind of a grotto, I'm going to use my favorite site for finding Creative Commons open, high quality pixel reference, and that is Pixel Bay or Pixabay. So what am I going to look for? I think I already looked a little bit for Grotto. And remember, if you're going to have a banner of sponsored ads at the top, sponsored content, you got to scroll down to the royalty-free images. And there are 350 of them. So I don't have to be... I can be pretty picky. Now, isn't this amazing? that that's my sketch, and then there's something that kind of matches that compositional shape already there for me. So if I think that has potential, I'm going to right-click on it and say Open Link in New Tab. And then I'm going to keep going. And I'm thinking, okay, that could be this kind of cool cavern opening right here. And I want something in the foreground here. I really like these rocks. I want it surreal, so I want lots of weird textures and colors. So I'm going to open that up. Sometimes Pixabay will even give you PNG assets that are already cut out. That's always nice. You're allowed to use those. And sometimes they'll give you pretty cheesy digital art examples that you might not want to use. Like, I don't really need the pyramids already in the image, right? And then sometimes you're going to find ones that are uh, computer generated. I like this interior, maybe for the background. Ooh, and I like this. This is what's called an oculus. For a little, yeah, hole coming through for the lighting. Because it's tricky to do three layers of depth inside a cave, right? And then this opens up to ocean. It gives me some rock. 
Notice I'm downloading more, more than I might need. Now, I'm going to avoid this one, at least where the waves are concerned, because those are the kind of, that's the kind of water element that I would expect to be moving. If you ever see white water, that means you would have to animate that later. So instead, still water, good. Crashing water, more work. Not so good. All right. So I've saved quite a few. I can always go back and find more reference too. And it seems like there's just no end of it in Pixabay because there's still three more pages. Now what's nice about that is when I download them, because I signed in with just my Gmail, I can download the highest quality raster image which is way beyond a thousand by a thousand pixels, which allows me to go much bigger if I want, even just using PhotoP. They'll go to my downloads folder. I can't control where they go, so that's why I'll look for them, but then I'll move them onto the desktop. Then I can close them. It's also good to have more resolution rather than less resolution because what if I only want a small element of it, but I want to make that bigger in my composition. So it's always good to have more resolution. Just because you're downloading more than five doesn't mean you're going to use more than five necessarily, at least to get started. But this is the next step, to improve our sketch, thinking of those three layers of depth. So now, this was my kind of initial sketch, kind of what I saw in my mind's eye. And now if I open all of these, I have eight images here, well really seven images, I put them onto the desktop. And then I'm going to take my folder, put that onto the desktop from Documents. Try to organize my desktop a little bit. Then I'm going to open up my folder, and I'm going to create an Assignment 1 folder. And I'm going to add these in. I had already downloaded some references. Now, how can I view these in a way that's nice? I'm going to use the view options. It's these three little dots at the top. This is the finder within a Mac operating system. Helps you see your folders and your content. And I'm going to click on the bottom where it says show view options. Please don't click on set desktop picture because I'll have to reset it. So show view options. Now with the view options, you're going to arrange them by their name. That's going to put them in a nice grid. You're going to shrink this down, make it big. This is what we call a design board. And then you're going to grow your icons until you can see them all on the screen. Right? If you want, you can collapse the grid spacing a little bit. Maybe you can make them a little bit bigger that way. But that looks pretty good. So those are view options. Just do it for that folder. Do not do it for for everything on the computer, because that's a pain to reset, right? So don't click use as defaults. Otherwise, your desktop's going to have huge, huge icons. Okay. Now that I'm looking at my references, I'm going to open up my sketch. And I'm just going to do it digitally, but you can do it in your sketchbook. There's pencils, there's scrap paper. You could also do it digitally. And now... Oh, I don't want to be in Photoshop. i got to show you in Photo P. Same thing. Oh. There we go. The tools are the same, but yeah, the icons on it are a little different. Yeah, sometimes the what they call things is slightly different. 
but all the functionality is the same. So I'm going to take this basic sketch, and now I'm going to work to improve it. So how can I improve it? So remember when we were looking through our hands, it helps that the foreground element has the equivalent of like fingers that you can look through. Instead of just this block, what's kind of a nicer foreground element I can use that's a little bit stronger? I like this one here. It has a lot of kind of cutouts. And then maybe I can layer that up with this one here. So there's a lot, lot more kind of engaging. I could even flip this upside down and like kind of use these rocks. It's kind of these jagged things coming in. So to improve my foreground, I'm just going to draw in with my brush. Oh, that looks terrible. Let's change it here. I'm going to go from the side, kind of bring it in like this, and I'm also going to bring it up like these kind of jagged rocks and then down. And this is going to be my foreground. So these are all my one elements. So this will be one. And you know what? In, I did naming with numbers in the last class. For this, I'm going to use colors. So these are going to be the blues. My foregrounds are going to be blue. So you just right click on your references that you think might be helpful for that. And you mark them with that color. Now my middle ground, it's this stuff. And what was the one that had that shape? It was this one. That's going to be orange. My middle ground orange. Remember your middle ground hand when you're doing the three layers of depth exercise, that's where you're going to see the most texture, the most contrast, the most visual interest. So this is going to be kind of a hero element for me in the middle ground. And then it gives me all of this to kind of fill up with the background from, from something else. So if I need to improve my sketch, that makes it like there's kind of a column here, some visual interest like this, still basically the same composition because I'm deciding where I'm placing things. But that's all going to be the orange. And then my background, I like the idea of using this oculus. And remember, you can take these assets. These are from Pixabay. They're all huge. But you can also flip them. You can flip them by transforming them in PhotoP, but I can also just do it in Preview and get a sense of that composition. And I like how bold and graphic that is. So this is going to be kind of middle ground and background, right? Instead of a sun there, it's going to be this oculus showing the sky. And I can just quickly whoops, flip this and erase what was there before. So for the background, I'll make this purple. Already, that is one, two, three, four, five elements, right? I'm going to need more, but that's a good place to start. So some of these other ones, they could be good transition elements between some of these other big ones. So I say five is the maximum you want to start with. So I have three that make up the foreground. That's a lot. Just one in the mid-range and one in the, in the far background. Okay. Now what I do is I'm going to make a quick screen grab of this because this is going to go into Canvas, this sketch. And if you've improved your sketch, if you want to get my input on it, I'm very happy to do that. Once you're happy with your sketch, you're going to post it into Canvas. You don't need to post multiple sketches. You just need one. Sometimes it helps to sketch both vertically and horizontally to see different options using the same references. 